Hi, this is Jack Schaub, and this is Chiller Service Advice, a video cast designed for the curious observer to the seasoned HVAC specialist. This is episode 10, titled How to Choose Between Ethylene and Propylene Glycol in Your Chiller. So in my last episode, I had talked about why there may be a need for either of these in your chilled water system. And this short video will explain the differences and applications and reasonings for using either the propylene or ethylene glycol in your chiller. So if you've already decided that you need some type of glycol in your system, then you need to end up weighing out the differences between the two before you can be able to make a choice. Now the main difference between the two is the toxicity levels and the performance efficiency or heat transfer. So when it comes to toxicity levels, the propylene glycol has very low toxic levels and why it is used in cosmetics and personal products and even in some salad dressing oils. So I have found personally in my application with propylene glycols in the chiller industry, two different kinds. One ends up being a 100% food grade safe propylene glycol, has no inhibitors in it, it has no dyes, it's 100% clear. The other is a inhibited propylene glycol that has an inhibitor package in it and usually has some kind of a dye. Now the dyes and inhibitor package in this particular inhibited propylene glycol are still far less toxic than any ethylene glycol. Now ethylene glycol, although it is very efficient, is poisonous and it must be handled very carefully for human and animal exposure. Now the ethylene glycol itself comes with a strong inhibitor package and has dyes in it. So now that you've heard the differences between the two, you probably ask yourself, why doesn't everybody just use propylene glycol and call it a day? Well, ethylene glycol has good uh, reasons to be out there. One, it ends up having better heat transfer than propylene glycol. It ends up being a little less expensive than propylene glycol and has better freeze protection by volume. So the same amount of ethylene glycol uh, has a better freeze protection the same amount volume wise as propylene glycol. So for me, when it comes to choosing between the two, it you really have to weigh out things based on, for me, the application and safety. So there are many chiller men, or many chiller applications that are out there um, that need chilled water system, chilled water cooling, and anything that's related to food, pharmaceutical, uh, something you know related related to something that you're eating, um, you always want to use a propylene glycol. Um, give you a for instance, uh, you have a chiller system that's cooling your beer or your wine or your sauces that are being made or some kind of chemical application and the exchanger that is on the other side of that food industry type of thing has a breach, then you end up having a serious health risk. With the propylene glycol, you don't have that. Now, if you happen to have a closed water system that has very little exposure to human interaction, nothing related to food-wise, then I would end up choosing to use the ethylene glycol. Reasons being is it has a better heat transfer value, ends up being a little less costly, and the inhibitor package that's inside of there keeps your water in check better. So if you have poor water quality in places that you're located, maybe better to end up going in that direction. Now that you've heard the different kinds of applications and different kinds of glycols to use, you can be able to make a better choice in choosing the one that you need. Now, if you're curious about types and brands of chiller glycol, please look us up on our website, chillers.com, in the antifreeze section, and it may be able to help you out. I hope this has helped you today, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.